Do I have everybody's attention now? Hello everybody, Richard the Dick Coughlin, 616. Sit tight, because this one could be a bit of a bumpy ride. You know, for the last two and a half years, I've been regularly replying to videos made by Pat Condell. I've actually not made as many as people think I have. I've made 16 video replies. This will be officially the 17th. I've never done this in four plus years of being on this online spastic bukkake that we call YouTube. But the time has come for me to make a very bold move. And I promise that I'm sticking to this. I know there's going to be a lot of cynics, but no matter... I'm sticking to this no matter what, because it's time for me to evolve. And as you all know, you can't evolve until you've first done the first thing you need to do to evolve, which is get rid of all the pointless, unnecessary shit that's holding you back. And which is why, after this video, there will be no more Richard Coughlin video responses to or about anything Pat Condell has said or done. Most of you are sat there now hearing that and you're thinking, yeah, bollocks, right. And <clears throat> I get your point, and I get that, I too. But the thing is this, I have to face the facts of reality. The only relevant fact here is that Pat Condell has not got anything left for me to work with. He hasn't had anything left for me to work with for fucking months, years, possibly. Credit to him, you know, he's managed to get by and do very well and be much more successful than me and most other people on YouTube, you know, simply by making the same video every three to four weeks. His content has become like a sort, it's sort of like a YouTube equivalent of a Scooby-Doo cartoon where they're all running down and it's the same fucking background, it's the same three things. And hey, I'm not knocking him, it fucking worked. But I can't do anything interesting or imaginative with the same fucking shit. You give me the same shit you gave me last week that I couldn't do anything fucking with, I can't do anything with it this fucking week, you know what I mean? It's still shit. You know, and so I've got nothing, I've got no stuff. The only way I will ever return to making a Pat Condell video after this is if he does something ridiculously over the top, like he openly advocates an, a Muslim genocide, or he's caught on CCTV being arrested, drunk driving by some Islamic police officer, and he says something, you know, like some sort of Mel Gibson-esque Islamophobic comment. Before I address his recent videos, this is a Richard Coughlin video, and I'm, a, as we all know, I'm a emo drama whore, and uh, in order for me to sort of do this video properly, I would have to make this the most of this as I can. This is my no point of no return right here. I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. You know, when I arrived on YouTube back in 2008, this whole, it was all very exciting because there was this whole YouTube atheist community culture and there was all these new people to interact with and all these new nutters to find, which is essentially what I was here for. And then there was Pat Condell. Now, Pat was different. I knew he was supposed to be a comedian. I watched his videos. I thought they were all right. Having done stand-up for seven years at the point when I came on YouTube, I had never heard his name mentioned once. Although I knew he had been on the stand-up circuit, I just never knew to what degree or what level he'd reached. But the difference between Pat and everyone else on YouTube was he was the only person who never interacted. He never took part. Comments, video responses, he didn't do that. And in every video I've ever seen of his, I, I felt like he, he's never really been himself. Because he doesn't talk to his audience. I like to feel that I'm talking to you now, and if you're sat there watching this, you, you can feel that I'm trying to reach out to you. Right, and talk to you as a person. He could have been doing his video to a brick fucking wall. It, what, there was no feeling. I never got any real sense of who he was. He wasn't talking to his audience. And I think that's kind of important to do because your audience ultimately are the ones who help make you grow and make you bigger. They're the ones who share your videos. They're the ones who comment and like and favorite them. They're the ones who mirror them. Anytime he had a video censored or flagged down, there'll be 2,000 mirrors of the fucking thing, right? I even mirrored one once many, many years ago. Pat, what did you ever give back? What did you ever give them back? to these kind-hearted folk supporting you. Six years on YouTube, right? Not one mirror of a censored video. You didn't make one video giving a load of channels a shit. I mean, you got 170,000 subs. You could make a channel overnight. You never, I've never even seen you make a single comment on a video, like a, like a sort of like a reply to someone, or even just, a, not a reply, just a thanks guys, thanks for watching, a gesture. What you are, Pat, is a fucking leech, in my opinion. Now, before anyone says it, I realize that Pat doesn't have to do anything for anybody. He's not obliged to do anything other than just make his videos the way he wants. Of course not. Do what you fucking want. But I do find it kind of interesting the fact that you've done absolutely diddly shit, less than minus negative fuck all divided by wank to the power of diddly squat. I find that interesting because if you were serious about the points you get in your video about atheist morality and community and humanism and secularism and helping each other and being part blah 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 blah, fighting for justice, 
fighting for truth, fighting for, you know, working together to, you know, create a better world. Peace. If that was all there, then you would be helping the people who want to help you. Those people who wanted to help you, who were helping you. You gave them nothing. Well, that's not strictly true, because there was one user who, on several occasions, you went a little bit out of your way to help promote and give some attention to. And who was that user, Pat? Oh yeah, it was Brett fucking Keen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brett Keen. The single biggest waste of perfectly good carbon ever to grace this fucking earth. A liar, a censor, a thief, an abuser, an exploiter, a manipulative 300 pound pile of piss flavoured jelly. That's all he was. He was the one guy you gave more attention to. He was the guy who, who you favourited and who you kept on your channels list, which includes Drinking with Bob. All the infantile hyperbole of Pat Condell condensed into easily consumable screeching tirades. UKIP Webmaster, who I'm not going to get into UKIP, expect a video about them at a later date. How the World Works, who on a personal level I get on with quite well. His videos are still anthropomorphised horseshit in a pair of glasses. Daniel Hannon, the Tory MP who went to America a couple of years ago to be on Neil Cavuto's show and Glenn Beck's show and Sean Hannity's show to basically spout a load of lies about the NHS in order to feed into the fucking right wing mentality about the fucking nationalised health service. The two biggest channels you endorse are of course The Amazing Atheist and Thunderfoot. Now The Amazing Atheist, as much as he and I are really not on the site, you know, don't get on with each other and don't like each other, you know, he has made several videos packed quite frankly destroying you. And the other one's Thunderfoot. who looks great when he's bitch slapping a fucking mentally retarded creationist around, but anything slightly more complicated than that, the man looks like a fucking idiot. Because he gets most of his fucking information from you. For me, Pat, you only care about one thing here, and that is, in my opinion, you want to get that feeling back. A feeling that I know, and you and I can both understand, and, not, and nobody else that I know of on YouTube can understand. It's that feeling you get from doing stand-up comedy. It's a special feeling. <clears throat> I've had that. I get that feeling. Right. I get it still because I still perform. You quit in 1996. You haven't told a fucking joke live in front of an audience for 16 years. It's the greatest feeling in the world to stand on a stage and make a room full of complete strangers fucking laugh for 10, 15 minutes, or half an hour, an hour, whatever. You threw that away in 1996 and according to your website you went on to write jokes for ex crap jokes for excellent comedians and some pretty bad sitcoms. Right, and you then say you're not going to name what these are. The, the amount of shame you must feel to like, brazenly state that you're not going to fucking pimp out your, your credentials says a lot to me. In 1996, you, your last thing you were involved in was a one-man play that you wrote, and it was called Barry Sorts It Out. Now, I never saw it, I'm not going to be able to comment on it, but it got some good reviews. But there was one review that you got in the Financial Times, and it's really interesting. I'm just going to read you this one line from the review that is almost frightening in its prophetic nature. A sordid East End comedy written by stand-up Pat Condell. It repeats ad nauseum the same gag in which Barry's narrative recounts his claim, reasonable thoughts followed, by, followed with a, so I by his crassly Neanderthal actions. That is you now, Pat. That describes everything you've fucking done or uploaded in the last five years. Don't get me wrong, I've had bad reviews and Pat's got good reviews. I just found that one thing fascinating because regardless of anything good he's ever done, this is what he's going to be remembered for and he will be remembered for, the shit he's put on this website. Now, I've spoken to a few acts since uh, being on YouTube who do remember seeing you performing live on the UK circuit many, many decades ago. And by all accounts, you were actually quite good. So what the fucking hell happened to you, Pat? You cannot have been the same performer back then that you are fucking now. Comedy, Pat, and I'm not going to patronise you here, you know, comedy is about taking something and looking at it in a way that most people haven't thought to do so, and then showing it to your audience again. Look at that, right? Comedy needs to be unpredictable, and it, ha it needs to have levels to it. Things you don't say that make people think it should be used to do something that nobody else is doing because it's one of the few art forms left that still can do that. Saying religion is stupid and theists are all retarded idiots may have been slightly risque back when you were still doing live stuff back in the 80s and the early 90s, but not anymore, right? It's old, it's hack, and it's rather easy to do, but you seem happy with that. You seem happy being this obvious, predictable, comfortable in your own fucking mediocrity. You obviously like making your one video every four weeks over and over again, saying the same fucking thing every time. You're an atheist, you don't believe in God. Well fucking done, Pat. 
Now, could you please stop patting yourself on the fucking back for not believing in God? Right, well done, neither do I. It's not a fucking achievement in and of itself. It's just a minority view, right? So lots of things. It doesn't mean they're fucking special. And you call yours what you do, godless comedy. Because comedy is just rife with pro-religious fucking material and comedians. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It hasn't been since the 1950s when Lenny Bruce and George Carlin were doing fucking stuff about religion. Billy Connolly, Jerry Sadowitz, Bill Hicks, Richard Pryor, right? But all these comedians from all these fucking decades ago. However, to be fair, I don't think your skill is comedy writing or even performing. I think it's milking shit for all it's worth and getting every little bit you can get out. You released a book on the self-publishing site lulu.com, which Brett Keane used to pimp out his fucking horse shit. And you charge £10, sorry, £12 for, for a book. And what was it of? It was transcripts of the first 60 videos you'd made on YouTube. Really? You couldn't think of anything new to add to it? I mean, I don't mind the transcripts, but something extra but as a sort of thank you for, pe for people who just bought the book they could see. Just transcripts of videos they could watch online for free. Now, I realise people are going to say, well, if people are going to buy it, yeah, I know that. But it's a sense of an artist. You have a sense of obligation to sort of do something that make, you know, that's a special effort to sort of push yourself. Not just take that easy option because you know suckers are going to be out there doing it. But let's not forget your DVD. In fact, you've got two DVDs out. Anthology and Anthology 2. And what is in these DVDs? Oh, fuck me. It's every single video you've made on YouTube. Well, fuck my ass with joy, Pat. What a fuck. It's a DVD with your first fucking 30 and your next 30 videos on YouTube. That's it. It's a man sitting in his front room talking to a camera. It's live comedy without the audience. How the fuck do you sleep at night, Pat, knowing that that's what your best you can do to make money now? That's how creatively spent you are. You sell shit to people that they've already seen and could watch online for free. Why are people even buying it? Go on keepvid.com, download all these videos for fucking free, and then put it onto a DVD yourself. Don't be a fucking mug. And there is another point to this, because imagine if The Amazing Atheist, or even myself, had tried that, and we announced we'd released a DVD, and it was the first 30 videos we'd made on YouTube. Can you imagine how much fucking shit we would get? And how much fucking a hard time we would get from Bill for ripping everyone off? And quite rightly so. You know, people wonder, Pat, what it is about you that I find so fucking interesting. Why am I drawn to you in some way? And most people like to think it's because I'm just trying to attention whore and just leech views and subscribers. That's pretty much bollocks when you consider that every time I make a video about you, I lose subscribers. But I once lost 250 in the first hour. That was one of my first videos. So if I'm doing it for subs, it's a pretty piss poor tactic to have done 17 times now. And plus, I don't know if you've read your comment sections, Pat, but I do, and I don't want your fucking subscribers watching my videos. They're fucking nuts. I figured it out a little while ago, right, the, the, you know, the fascination I have with you, and it's like, of all the fear that you try and pump into the world, what, what my interest in you stems from is a different fear, because it's one of the few things you and I have in common, that I, you know, I share, you and I both share a history <coughs> of performing live. We understand live performance, writing, you know, touring, going to clubs, we understand that, set construction, joke construction. I, and I love doing it. I'll do it for as long as I can until it becomes impossible for me to do it. Like, I die or my voice fucking cacks out. I'm going to keep doing it for as long as I can, right? Because I'm passionate about it. It makes me want to get up and do stuff every day. But then I come across you and your YouTube channel, and I wondered what happened that killed your passion for it? What, not just your passion for sound, what just killed your passion in general? What made you so fucking jaded about everything in the world? I'm 30 years younger than you, and the only good thing I can take away from you is that, the, that you filled me with a fear that I realised I don't want to turn into you. I don't want to become someone who's, so, who's had his life sucked out of him and is now, is, is now at this stage where he can't be bothered anymore and he's just doing something simple, making internet videos. It's really not that complicated, Pat, as you know, compared to fucking live performing. You know, I just have this desire from you to make sure that I do not end up like you, right? You, you've shown me what I could become if I lose my hunger and my passion and my desire. And the idea that I could wind up being like you, like this miserable, bad-tempered, ignorant and uninspiring twat, scares me more than anything else in the world. More than a million fucking extremist Muslims knocking at the front door ever could. You're like the ghost of comic of comedian's future. Right, you've visited me and you've shown me what it could be, and now it's up to me to change that. Personally, 
I don't do hate speech because I think hate is a self-destructive emotion and therefore rather a stupid one. Now all you ever do is you jump on any issue and incident that can be spun by you in, in, into your very narrow, tedious and fucking predictable agenda. Be it anti-Muslim bigotry, anti-EU, you know, uh, anti-Palestine, pro-Zionism, Israeli occupation denialism, anti-diversity, anti-multiculturalism, anti-PC, anti-immigration. Do you not find it funny, Pat, that for a guy who claims to champion freedom, 90% of the things you believe in start with anti? Or maybe start fighting for a few things, instead of against them? Because nothing will get better in life, Pat until you let go of your prejudices and fears. It's not about the world changing, it's about you changing the way you deal with the world. I mean, is this who you want to be? If I'd shown a 17, 18, 25, 30 year old Pat Condell your videos, do you think that's, he'd have gone, wow, God, I'm gonna be, that, that's awesome, I'm so glad that's where I'm gonna end up. I fucking don't, and I don't think anyone else who's got a fucking soul would. You embody the horrible old git who's, you know, who hates the world because it no longer resembles, you know, or belongs to him anymore. Right, well tough shit old man, let it go and try and get written, try and get old and die with some fucking dignity. Your last two videos really epitomise your lack of concern for and respect. The, fir the first thing, you know, being another predictably biased, you know, extremely pro-Israel, Zionism, you know, ultra-Zionist fucking propaganda spouting pile of shit, in which you stay hanging on to the bandwagon of Israel versus Palestine conflict, which is another toxic debate that I will probably never be going near again after this fucking video. There are many debates that I loathe on this website, but the Israelistein, as I'm going to call it, is one of the worst, right? 90% of the people involved are just using this sad situation as a vehicle for their own fucking agenda. It's one of those few debates where the worst position you can take is the position that I've tried taking which is neutral and centered I made a Facebook post a, a couple a little while ago stating that you know the recent stuff in Israel and, and Palestine I actually felt bad for the innocent people on both sides who were caught up in this futile ideological conflict that seemingly has no end in sight until one side ultimately gets annihilated and I got some responses agreeing with me but I got so many people replying from both sides giving me shit and calling me a coward for not taking one position over the other this is a conflict where it seems People aren't happy unless you take one side. So I've decided I'm going to take a side. I'm on the side of the Israelis and the Palestinians who are fighting and striving and doing everything they can to bring about peace. And they do exist. I know Pat paints it a different story, but they do exist. You can't say Hamas represents all Palestinians any more than the Israeli government who murders people, fucking it represents all Israelis, any more than the American government represents Americans, or the British government represents you, Pat. You know, and I don't think you give a shit about Israel or the Israelis, Pat. I'd wager that you give about as much a shit about Israel and the Israelis as David Duke gives a shit about Palestine and the Palestinians. Yes, David Duke is a Palestine supporter, and of course it's got nothing to do with his extensive and well-documented Jew-hating and anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. It's got nothing to do with that, right? He just feels bad for the Palestinians. He's an empathetic guy. These white supremacists normally are. Now, just like your support, Pat, I'm sure it's got nothing to do with your well-documented and extensive anti-Muslim fucking bigotry and your Islamo-fucking fit paranoia. It's got nothing to do with that, is it? I'm not saying that everyone involved in this debate is either like David Duke or, or fucking Pat Condell, because they're not. There's many, many, many different types of fucking wankers on each side, okay? But the fact is, there are so many people like David Duke and like Pat Condell just jumping on it for the fucking, for the sake of it, to pick a team and to, fu and to have this passionate desire to support a country that you've never even fucking set foot in. I know, Pat, you've been at Israel once, right? If you've been to, if you're from Israel, or you've got family there, or you, I can get it, right? Same with Palestine, right? But 90% of the people on either side who are supporting either side here, that have never fucking set foot near the fucking place. And yet they act like it's happening on their own doorstep. This ain't a, this ain't a fucking FA Cup final. This isn't like a WrestleMania main event. This is a real life situation. Real people are dying. But that means nothing to you, because you're distant enough from it that you can dehumanise one side for your own fucking comfort without feeling too guilty. And to combat the arguments on anyone who feels like posting a comment trying to convince me either way, I, rather than saying fuck Israel, yay Palestine, fuck Palestine, yay Israel, or being neutral and balanced, I've decided to take a little bit from all three, and now my position is 
Fuck Israel and Palestine, both of them. I don't think either side really gives a shit whether I support them or not. And honestly, I don't think me supporting them can really do any good or change anything. So fuck the pair of them, right? I'm moving on onto something I can actually feel I can get invested in and it's going to be worthwhile for me to do. Then very recently you made a video, Pat, a little few days ago called Ha Ha Islamophobia, right? So bad now are your videos you have to write laughter into the title. And of course your is Ha Ha Islamophobia t video is just as predictable and obvious as any one would fucking think it, but you didn't even need to make it, you should have just pointed at the title and gone, Islamophobia, <laughs> and that was it. That would have actually been funny, I'd have thumbed that up. Because Pat, you, like most bigots of a certain nature, deny that the bigotry that you, uh, that you engage in actually exists. The same way someone like Duke, David Duke would deny anti-Semitism exists. The same way you know, racists deny that racism exists. The same way sexists deny that sexism exists. And homophobes deny that homophobia exists. And in fact, it's the other way around, isn't it? It's always the other. It's always them who are the victims of bigotry that's not talked about. And you want to deny that Islamophobia exists? Well, of course it does. Of course, in your mind, it does, Pat. I've got two channels, and I'm not going to go through every single fucking detail. I'm going to leave a massive long list of videos, right? Just so I know no one's going to go through them all. But there's no excuse for anyone watching this video if you're at this point to fucking go through every single one of the, through and see. I've got more than enough videos which document and give examples and show full, you know, and show the results that this thing, this phenomenon called Islamophobia is very real. And there are genuinely lots of people out there, Pat, who are scared of all Muslims, mainly because of people like you. And you know about this, Pat, because most of these people are your fucking subscribers. And you've subtly lent your support in the past not not openly saying it but you've done enough you've left a little enough links in videos and favorited enough videos to link credence to groups like the english defense league you know whose very existence is based on hatred of all muslims right islamophobia pat if you acknowledge that there are a lot of muslims many muslims for the most part are not violent murderous extremist terrorist nutters right that's a fact any sane person can see that and if you acknowledge there are people out there who are genuinely scared of all Muslims because they think they are all murderous, evil, terrorist-loving nutters. Then you have to acknowledge that those, that second group of people are going to treat the first group of people, the Muslims who are not nutters, with greater suspicion and treat them as if they may as well be. That, Pat, is Islamophobia. That, it's that fucking simple. I've just explained. And if you deny the first two points in any way, you're living in a fucking fantasy world. But you'd never be so gracious as to acknowledge this and try and quell down the fucking hysteria because controversy creates cash, doesn't it, motherfucker? And so I've decided to officially end my crusade against the ever-increasing insanity of Pat Gondell. And I know it'll be tough, but in my life I've given up alcohol, crack cocaine, cocaine, and methamphetamine. And I know I can beat this affliction with your help one day at a time. And if someone out there is disappointed that I'm no longer gonna carry on making Pat Condell videos, then to you I say this, make your own fucking videos, or get someone else to do it. Get someone else to troll through and debunk his fucking bullshit. You know, it seems to me that Pat's failure in life is the inability to never evolve and grow and develop, to wanna stick to and stay where he is, and just do the same thing over and over again, cause it's easier, not because it's good. And I feel that if I carry on wasting my time rebutting every stupid fucking thing he says, then I'm just gonna end up going mad by chasing a goal that can never be achieved, right? Getting packed to listen and see sense. That is my unicorn. In anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. Fuck you, Pat Condell. Fuck you, Kip. And fuck all you ass-kissing little wankers who go around calling your se claiming that you're secularists and you're free. You you love. You're for freedom and you're for freedom of speech and you're for freedom of. You ain't for freedom of shit. Right? You want your own fucking. You want your own. You want to live in a world where everything's how you like it. Well, bollocks to the lot of you. Richard the Dick Coffin, 666, good night, and may God be less. It's really quite amazing what you can learn about yourself from other people's perceptions. I mean, here I was thinking that I'm a liberal-minded, freedom-loving Democrat at heart, but in fact what I really am is a monstrous, hypocritical, right-wing, reactionary, xenophobic, jingoistic, flag-waving little Englander. A bigoted throwback who's scientifically illiterate, and morally reprehensible. And not only that, I ought to be thoroughly ashamed of myself, and frankly, I'm an embarrassment to anybody with a brain or any kind of decent human values. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Do I have everybody's attention now? You're 
goddamn right. <laughs>